Well, we're joined now by the General Secretary of the Unite Union, Sharon Graham. Thanks very much for being uh, with us. We spent an awful lot of time on the programme today talking about mm. Nadim Zahawi's tax affairs or loans taken out by Boris Johnson. Are you worried that this is effectively a distraction for the government? Totally, because it's woeful uh, listening to this, because, of course, the big issue now is the NHS and what is going to happen in relation to the NHS. And I've heard government ministers coming on different programmes, your programmes, other programmes, literally saying that they are in talks with unions. Um, and there has been no talks with unions. Um, so we're still in exactly the same position that we've been in for weeks. There's another strike tomorrow. There's an escalation of strikes over the coming weeks. Um, and Rishi Sunak, I have to say, is missing in action. I don't know where he is. Um, he should be getting round the table. He is the CEO of this company, if you were talking about negotiating terms. He is the key decision maker. It's clear Stephen Barclay cannot make a decision. Now, it's either that Rishi Sunak is not up to this job, that he doesn't want to come into the negotiating room and to do this deal, or there must be another reason as to why he's allowing this self-harm to happen to the NHS. There have been some talks, though, right? Stephen Barclay has been talking uh, to some uh, union members, right? But they're not pay talks, and this is the problem. The big issue here is about pay. Um, there is an issue where the ambulance workers, the, uh, the nurses, the NHS are saying we need a pay rise. The public is supporting that pay rise, as we can see from surveys, and we've got the employer, in this instance the government, who, who will talk about anything, but, but they won't talk about, about pay. next year's pay rise, right? But that's not the one that's gone. Well, that's not what the dispute is about. The dispute is about 22-23. But they haven't made any offer. Sophie, this is the scenario. I mean, I negotiate every day of my life. I'm in the rooms with CEOs all the time. We know what it does and what has to happen to have deals happen. Um, this employer, being the government, is not interested in doing a deal as far as the NHS is concerned. And I have to say, we are concluding now that there must be a much more sinister reason for this because this level of self-harm is unprecedented. The public are crying out. I, I came here in a cab this morning and the cab driver was saying, why don't they just give a pay rise to the NHS? Everybody wants that to happen. It's almost like there is another reason for them doing what they're doing, because it's total incompetence otherwise. What do you think that reason is, then? Well, I think that they are looking to privatise the NHS. Genuinely, I believe that they're, they're looking, as this is the moment, they can privatise the NHS. I said when I was on your programme the last time that I was very concerned about the Chancellor who was the health secretary who wanted the NHS in the American trade deal. And there was a big fight about making sure it wasn't in the American trade deal. There is something unusual going on here that they will not come to the table. There are choices that can be made that means we can pay for this. That is not, there is not a problem about paying with the fifth richest country in the world. There is something going on here. Otherwise, they are at a level of incompetence not known, I mean, because it's unreal. It's a big claim to say the government is looking to privatise mm. the NHS, and that goes against everything that they've said about the NHS remaining free at the point of use. I mean, Labour are prepared to countenance more private sector involvement in the, in the NHS right now uh, than the government. You know, do you have any evidence to back this up? Because I guess what they would say is, look, at the, at the minute, we're, we're spending more on debt interest than education. This is why there has to be pay restraint. Well, actions speak louder than words to me. So words, uh, you know, words are cheap. Um, there is a crisis in the NHS. They can come to the table and negotiate on this crisis. All the general secretaries, including me, have said, we will be there any time, any place, anywhere. We'll cancel any meeting to be there in that room. He is the CEO of this group of workers and he refuses to come to the table. Now, it's either that he doesn't know what to do when he gets to that table. I mean, maybe he doesn't know how to negotiate. I don't know. Maybe it's that there is another issue going on. But we have to look at what's happening. Why would they not be coming to the table and deal with this issue? Everyone is crying out for them to get this issue solved. And unless they solve the issue of workers and the crisis of workers in NHS and those people leaving the NHS, we will never be able to get the NHS back on its knees. And they know that. How long could these strikes go on for? Well, I hope that they are resolved very, very quickly. And, but the problem is, and, you know, when you're in a negotiation, two parties have to speak and they have to come out uh, with a deal and then that deal will go back to the membership. We have not had any deal to take back to the membership. They went round different studios before Christmas saying they were going to offer things. It was nearly there, you know, glimmers of hope. I didn't have that warm, fuzzy feeling of hope, I have to tell you, because I've seen this many times before. They haven't even offered a deal. So they are, they're being disingenuous by pretending that there are talks going on um, about pay, significantly about pay. There are absolutely no talks going on about pay. Every general secretary will tell you that. Do you think part of the issue uh, is that initially uh, some of the proposals were what the government would describe as clearly unaffordable, 90% uh, for nurses, for example? 
Well, that tells me they don't understand negotiation. Obviously, there is an opening uh, situation where a claim is tabled. Um, I think it's really clear that what we're talking about is a pay rise in the double-digit pay rise. That's what we're talking about. Um, the RCN have already said they'd meet them halfway. I don't know how much more uh, hints do they want to take on that. Um, so it's a double-digit pay rise. If they came in the room and they offered a double-digit pay rise, we would take that back to our members and our members would make the decision. But they're not doing that. They are playing with words, dancing around their handbags, and they're not coming and doing the deal they need to do to get the NHS back working. Now, we're having rolling strikes in mm -hmm. the NHS, nurses ambulance workers at a time when we all know the NHS is under a lot of pressure, mm. right? Do you accept that that is putting people's lives at risk? Well, what I'd say about that is that their lives are at risk already. 500 people a week. I mean, just think of that number, because we say numbers very quickly. 500 people a week are dying waiting for ambulances. 500 a week. That is unbelievable in a country like ours. People are dying. If we don't take this stand and we don't sort out what's going on in the NHS, it will crash and die. Um, and so, therefore, this strike, yes, it's about pay, absolutely 100% it's about pay, and I think people want the NHS to get a pay rise, but it's also about the NHS itself. Um, and it's on its knees. Unless we can get more people working in it, it will not survive. So it's a strike to save the NHS as well as get a good pay rise for workers. Uh, the strike obviously has an impact uh, too. Um, that's certainly the view of Amanda Pritchard, the Chief Executive of NHS England, uh, who said uh, in an interview uh, this week, as the strike action is extended over long periods of time and as those dates start coming closer together, it does get more challenging. There is absolutely no doubt it is clearly having an impact. I think that's obvious. Yes, absolutely. And of course, what we do in strikes, and you know, this is uh, what we do across the board in the NHS, is that we put um, safety guarantees in. So I was on the picket line in the West Midlands uh, for the ambulance dispute. I'm on the picket line tomorrow in the North West for the ambulance dispute. And we negotiate safety cover in relation to those disputes. But it's never going to be as good, is it? You well, can I admit that, right? Well, 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 if, well, if we're talking about 500 people mm. uh, a week, as you say, according to the, uh, you know, acute uh, medicine uh, people, they say that, that is, that's 500 people a week, mm. up to 500 people dying because of delays for ambulances. If ambulance workers go on strike, that's going to have an impact. But we are putting in safety levels that mean it doesn't have as much as an impact. And that is actually the irony here. We could be in a situation, which we were on the 21st, where it was safer on the 21st than it was in normal play. Because we are in minimum service levels anyway. There's 130,000 people missing from the NHS. And to be honest with you, Sophie, what has to happen here is quite a simple solution. The government, all they need to do is to come to the table, do a negotiation, we come out of the room, we put it to the members, they ballot, and then everyone's back to work. It's a very simple thing. This has been drawn out for weeks and weeks and weeks. And you have to think, is this deliberate? Is it so deliberate that they're Are you saying out? that ministers are effectively lying then? When yes. they say that they are, you yes, are. Yes, I am saying that. Um, the ministers have been lying on a number of issues, and normally I wouldn't use that word. Uh, you know, it's not really a word that we would use. We tend to dance around that word a lot. But I have to tell you, the, the stuff that's been said about ambulance workers and them not covering minimum safety levels on disputes was a lie. And I'll, I'll say it very clearly, it was a lie. The stuff that's been tr trotted out, um, I did uh, something last week and the government's response was, we're in talks. That is a lie. They are absolutely not in pay talks. And this is the problem, that we haven't got an honest partner at the other side of the table. You know, normally you go into a negotiation, yes, you have argy-bargy, you don't always agree, you don't get everything you want, that is life. But you know that the person on the other side of the table wants resolution. I'm negotiating with somebody at the moment that I don't think wants resolution, and that's a real problem. I'll have to say, listening, like, whatever the, you know, the truth, listening to you now, it does feel like that deal is an awful long way off. Um, just before I spoke to you, uh, we spoke to Pat McFadden of mm. Labour. I was trying to get a sense about what Labour would do if they were in government right now, uh, what pay rise they would see uh, as fair. He said that, you know, he's not going to give a number, it, that would be meaningless, it wouldn't make any difference. Is he right or do you think it would be helpful if Labour actually were a bit clearer on what they would do? Well, look, I, Labour aren't in government, so he's right about that. But obviously they're in opposition. So I have to say, you know, I, I would prefer Labour to be in government. I think they would be far better on the NHS and a number of things. But actually, this is a moment to come out, in my opinion. Um, I think they should come out to say that they would give the NHS a pay rise and it would be 10%. 
I think that just needs to be said because everybody knows what we're talking about. We're all pretending we don't know the figure. I think they need to do that because what that will do then is, and they're being stepped with the public, I have to tell you, uh, but also it would say to the government the opposition is asking for the same thing. If they're in your seat, they would do the same thing. And it's really important because this is important because people keep using it as a reason. It can be afforded. There are ways to do it. There are choices to be made that means this can be afforded. Why do you think Labour aren't coming out and saying that? Well, he'll, they'll have to answer that. I mean, you know, for me, I think what people are looking for is, is leadership. You know, whenever I go into a negotiation, whenever I'm in a room, what you want people to be is clear. This is what I will do. This is what we want. This and you is think what we need. Labour isn't showing leadership on well, this? Well, I think that they are trying to be too cautious about it. You know, and that's, you know, when you're in a situation, we're in crisis now. This is not the time for being cautious. This is the time to show real leadership. And in opposition, you can show leadership. So I'd like them to come out and say, Yes, they support the pay rise, and yes, it would be a pay rise in the region of 10%. I don't see any problem with them doing that. OK, you've been very clear uh, on the programme this morning, I have to say, at uh, 10%. Uh, thank you very much.